All right, so thank you again for joining us. My name is Shauna Warner and I'm with Neighborhood Services. Um, and today we are gonna talk about a solar ready code. Um, we will have a question and answer at the end. So if you don't mind just holding your questions until then, it's just a short presentation. Um, and Shelly Seiler with Community Development is gonna be leading that. So Shelly. Sorry, couldn't get my unmute button, which it seems to be pretty standard these days. So uh, thank you everyone for coming today. Um, as Shauna said, my name is Shelly Seiler. I am the Interim Community Development Director. I have been with the city for 21 years. And so we are here today to discuss um, adoption of a solar ready code. Let me go ahead and advance through these slides. So um, as mo most of you probably know, the city uh, council adopted strategic performance measures. And so this presentation and the solar ready code uh, relates to 4.18, uh, performance measure 4.18 for sustainable growth, sustainable growth and development. And that's to reduce community greenhouse gas emissions by 80% of 2015 levels by 2050 and achieve community carbon neutrality by 2060. And so I think, Dino, are you good? Is your internet connection back up? It is. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to Dino to go through um, the bulk of the presentation, and then I will be back on uh, after he gives his presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for joining us in this presentation. Uh, my name is Dino Ocardo. I'm the Plan Review Manager here for the City of Tempe. Um, I'm happy to be a part of this team and, and uh, presenting to you the uh, temper, uh, uh, the Tempe Solar Readiness. Uh, so let's get started. Um, what we're going to touch on today is uh, the 2018 IECC adoption and solar readiness consideration, uh, why it matters, the Solar Ready Code Appendix, and the general requirements. Um, which includes some of the technical uh, requirements uh, of the actual uh, appendix itself. Uh, solar readiness in Arizona, which is a brief snapshot of, of uh, local municipalities um, and the next steps. And then we'll open it up for some questions. Next slide, please. Uh, January 1, 2019, the city adopted the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code. That was adopted uh, as one of the codes within the family of I codes, uh, which includes the IBC, the National Building Code, the IRC, the International Residential Code, and the IECC is one of many uh, that are included in that family. Um, as part of that, we just simply adopted the 2018 IECC as part of that. Uh, but included in uh, the uh, International Energy, Energy Conservation Code is Appendix CA, uh, and that covers a solar readiness, uh, which is technically called the solar ready zone. Um, it's contained within the actual body of the IECC and um, has uh, the provisions in that body of that appendix that we're looking to adopt. On September 30th, 2021, uh, we had a presentation to the SLCC, our Sustainable and Living, Livable Communities Committee uh, on Solar Readiness. Uh, on November 17th, 2021, uh, the council supported moving forward uh, with stakeholder and the outreach process, which you are now a part of. Uh, and the provisions contained in Appendix CA, and, and we wanted to... Um, uh, explain this. Uh, so the, the the provisions that are contained in, in an appendix are not mandatory unless they're specifically referenced when adopted. Uh, and as part of this process, uh, the outreach process, um, we seek feedback from you, uh, our public, uh, about the future adoption with consideration uh, to these provisions being mandatory. Next slide, please. Uh, why it matters. Well, uh, it just this appendix, uh, it encourages installation of renewable energy systems, in this case, solar. Uh, it 
It simply encourages, it doesn't require the installation of solar. Uh, and with that said, it, it would prepare a building for the future installation of solar energy equipment and associated piping and wiring. Uh, that simply prepares the building. And when we touch on the provisions, you'll see how uh, those different uh, requirements uh, pull that together. It supports the initiative and the climate action plan. Uh, there's a Tempe climate action plan and there's an update coming in March uh, to adopt policies uh, for a more resilient uh, to extreme heat and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Part of my presentation is blocked. Next slide, please. So here are some of the general requirements. So it's applicable for all new commercial buildings. And that includes all multifamily. The solar ready zone, which is the acronym SRZ, um, is to be located on commercial buildings of five stories or less in height. And this includes multifamily. And the solar ready zone is an established area uh, that is 40% of the calculated roof area, but in the equation less the area of designated vegetated roofs, skylights, and occupied roofs. So in many of our multifamily, uh, we find that there's amenity decks and this 40% would not impact the design of those amenity decks or a vegetated roof or skylight area. Uh, it doesn't have a negative impact on those. It only accounts for what is vacant, basically of roof space and only 40% of that. And it's just basically a space that is designated as solar ready zone to be left open in the design. Uh, one important piece of, of the provision is that the structural dead loads of not less than five pounds per square foot shall be included in the calculation. So the engineer on a new building would account for an additional five pounds per square feet in the solar ready zone area in his calculations. Um, and then there's interconnection pathways required from the solar readers ready zone for future piping and electrical service uh, or an electrical equipment, which includes the raceways. Um, and then there's also electric service reserve space within the uh, electrical equipment and panel equipment. So what you'll find is, is that there'll be a ready available, whether it be a shaft or some sort of pathway allowed to uh, install that future piping, which would not impact uh, deconstruction to the building or any um, sort of uh, invasive sort of measures that would need to be taken to install the solar equipment if opted for. Next slide, please. Uh, who's adopted the solar ready codes? Well, Scottsdale has adopted the 2015 IRC Appendix U um, and that is for residential, it's not for commercial. Tucson, again, the 2018 IRC, which is Appendix T in the 2018 um, version, and that's uh, for residential. And Pima County, uh, again, adopted the Appendix T for residential. You'll find in those communities, they're building more single family homes. They might have more subdivisions they're able to build out. In our community, we're doing a lot of multifamily. We're going up, we're doing a lot of commercial. Uh, so you're not seeing as much single family new construction here as those other communities. And that's why we're looking at the Appendix CA uh, from a commercial standpoint. And I believe Shelly, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you, everyone. Yep, thank you, Dino, for that piece of the presentation. So we wanted to provide uh, what our next steps are. So today we're having the virtual public meeting. Um, we will also be having some additional stakeholder meetings and then presentation to the sustainable sustainability and resilience commission in March that's scheduled for March 14th. Um, at the end of March, uh, they have not identified the specific date, but we will return to the sustainable and livable communities committee to provide them with the feedback um, that we receive in this public process. 
And we would love to hear from you, um, specifically if you could go to the forum, tempe.gov forward slash forum between today and March 1st and provide your comments regarding the presentation and um, man the mandatory adoption of the appendix for solar ready zones. And then we will also be going to a future work study presentation uh, to request council direction. And if anybody's interested in knowing about those future dates, just let us know and we can send out information to make sure that you are available to attend. Because again, um, what the council asked us to do is go and seek uh, stakeholder input as to you know, how we should move forward in the city. Um, we also included some resources, uh, a link to the 2018 IECC, um, some information about what you can do for residential solar if people are interested in pursuing the residential side, and then a link to our climate action plan. And with that, we are happy to open it up for any questions anyone may have. And I think Shauna put some information in the chat as well. So um, if you open up your chat, you can link to that as well. Anybody, Shauna, do you see any? Oh, David, I think has a question. It looks like. Yeah, David, you should be able to unmute yourself if you want to go ahead and ask a question. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the the residential solar. I know I've been talking about the rental prices in Tempe for a little while now, and um, for a while I was it was explained to me that one of the benefits of the solar readiness is that if you were a renter, that you would still benefit by having the reduced energy costs. So even though you might have an increase in rent, you would make up some of that you know, and, and saving on your energy bill. So I'm concerned that with it being solar ready, but not actually including the solar, we're still kind of on the hook for those improvements. And it's not just the solar readiness, but it's, you know, it's the parking space, it's the car charger, it's the solar readiness, the pool, all of those things add up into housing costs and, you know, reflect in our rental prices. So I just wonder about, you know, how we're having a conversation with that and if there's a way that we can maybe exempt the residential units. If it's commercial, I'm very supportive of that. I think commercial is great, but I'm just concerned about the way that rental prices are increasing right now that we have to be really careful that, you know, it's like every dollar counts right now. Certainly, thank you, David, for that comment. And that's the type of feedback we really wanna hear. Um, in the When we went to the Sustainable and Livable Communities uh, Council Committee, you know, there was, um, a desire to look at multifamily. Um, but again, we're here to seek your feedback. And if you could include those comments in the forum, we would appreciate it. Any other questions or comments for us? Hi, this is uh, Barbie Burke, and I'm on the Sustainability and Res Resilience uh, Commission, and I am also a green realtor. And um, I really disagree with the last comment about residential. Um, I have a lot of clients who want it, and um, you probably don't see it as much on rental property as you do on owner-occupied, because the benefits are much better there. But I think people are more open to solar for the roofs now and with electricity prices supposed to escalate, I think that's something that will affect a lot of homeowners in wanting to keep their electric bill down. Um, last summer alone, we had 53 days over 110. 2020, I mean, our weather probably uh, parallels Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So I think it's something that's not gonna go away. Um, other states embrace solar more than Arizona does. And otherwise I think we would have a lot more solar. And um, I feel very strongly about that because I work with people who have it on their roofs, either buying or selling. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbie. Uh, hi, this is Rob Lane. First, thank you for the presentation and taking the time um, today. One question in regards to the solar ready zone. I think if I recall correctly, said this is gonna apply to buildings that are essentially five stories or less in height, including multifamily residential. I think with that 
product type, you're going to see some multifamily residential that's going to have um, sur surface parking, but a lot of it being covered surface parking, wondering if the solar ready zone in terms of the roof area would include essentially, you know, uh, covered solar, uh, covered parking spaces uh, for, for solar panels on those uh, essentially carboards. Do you know, do you know how the appendix applies to parking areas? I know it's specific to the buildings. And one of the things, um, you know, as we go forward with this code and seek input, we always have the ability to amend it, it to fit how Tempe would like to see it in the residents and community. So that's one of the one of the reasons why we're seeking feedback is, is that if there are pieces of the code that, you know, whether it be excluding multifamily or including multifamily, those are the things that we want to hear about. But Dino, do you know about parking areas and how that is addressed or applied with the code? Uh, this code from, from the way uh, I interpret it, uh, it's simply about the, the rooftop area. It's specific to that. Um, it doesn't expand into the parking lot area or a parking garage, which in essence has a rooftop. I think it's a very good question. Um, I believe the intent though is the rooftop of the building itself and not necessarily for the for a covered parking garage, even though it doesn't exclude it. Um, so I think it's a very good question. I think it's something that uh, needs to be noted and something to be looked at on how, um, whether, you know, any expansion of the code would need to be done or, or any clarity within the body of the text would need to be um, implemented in order to have it specifically not be misunderstood in any way. Thank you. I hope I answered your question the best I could. You did, thank you. Dino, maybe we can see how, I mean, obviously we're not the only ones who might be dealing with something like this and maybe we can look into how other cities have treated um, solar and parking areas and get some additional information. But thank you, Rob, for that question. And then Shelly, we do have a comment in the chat from Natalie. Uh, saying she's a young person in the city of Tempe and very optimistic and hopeful about the solar ready codes. Solar ready codes are a crucial step towards Tempe's future as both a sustainable city and a leader in sustainability for other cities. Currently, when residents and businesses look into options to installing sol solar panels, there is an abundance of roadblocks due to the way their building was originally built and designed. It is expensive and time consuming to alter buildings to be suitable for solar installation after the fact. We can change this for future residents and businesses in the city of Tempe by requiring our new buildings to be solar ready. And also goes on to say the residents and businesses in Tempe have plenty of motivation to install solar panels. Uh, we continue to experience increasingly hot summers as Barbie mentioned as well with countless days exceeding 110 degrees. Since Tempe reaches such extreme temperatures in the summers, businesses and residents see traditional electricity costs skyrocket. And more importantly, Tempe's extreme heat makes air conditioning and cooking an absolute necessity in the summer. It is hardly surprising that residents and businesses would prefer to harness the sun's energy to cool their homes rather than pay high electricity bills. Let's see. And then again, making buildings solar ready is a basic measure to make it easier for the building's future owners to make the choice to switch to solar power. It should not be a financial burden for residents and businesses to install solar panels on top of their homes and office buildings. Solar readiness is a bare minimum measure a developer should take to enable residents and businesses to take climate action. So for those reasons, she's in favor of us adopting it. Thank you, Natalie, for all those comments. Yes, thank you. Um, and if you could, I guess this would be great to put um, or respond to in the forum. And Sean, I don't know if it's just easiest to, for us to do that or for Natalie to yeah, we'll, provide we'll capture all the comments in the chat as well. Yeah, and those Perfect. will be part of the inclusion of the public comments. Great, thank you. Hi there, uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay. Hi, my name is Sean Swisher. I'm an architect with Jones Studio uh, in Tempe and, and also live in Tempe. I'm, I'm also a commissioner on the City of Tempe Sustainability and Resilience Commission. Um, I want to state uh, also my support for adopting this code. I, I think it's a pretty minimal piece of code. Um, you know, it's I don't think there's much in the way of cost uh, that would be attributed to any new building to to do these simple measures for solar readiness. Um, and it can really make it a much uh, faster process for implementing solar panels um, and, and far less costly than having to do it as a retrofit later on. So I think if people are concerned about cost being trickling down to uh, uh, to people living in, in multifamily residences, et cetera, that might look to implement this code, um, it'd be far more expensive to do so later and uh, you'd see none of the savings of energy in the meantime. Um, so I just wanna state my support and think that this is a critical measure for the city of Tempe um, as part of uh, implementing the climate action plan. Thank you. Is it okay? Can I, I just wanted to clarify, um, this is for readiness, not actual solar energy, right? So there wouldn't be actually any cost savings from energy, right? That is correct. So what this does is prepares for the future installation of solar. So as you know, the as Sean had indicated, it really prepares the building so that if um, you know, say a developer was not ready to put solar into um, the building, they would be able to do so in the future and wouldn't have to um, look at the structural calcs. Um, the panel would be ready for that increase. So yes, it's just, it's readiness. It's not actual installation of solar. Yeah, and, and again, from my perspective as a practicing architect, um, it's far cheaper to implement something uh, during design and while something's being constructed than uh, trying to do so afterwards. And so uh, if there's a concern about costs, um, you'll never see the cost savings of an energy system, a solar panel energy system that never gets installed because it's too expensive to do so later on down the road. And uh, if, if you read the code sections that are looking to be adopted, they're extremely minimal as far as what sort of cost they might uh, place on the project during construction. Thank you both. It looks and like- Oh, you saw it. Okay, Ryan. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Ryan, that's a discussion that, you know, we're continuing to have it. Um, when we brought this to the Sustainable and Livable Communities Committee, again, they were looking at solar. I don't know that it would um, apply to duplexes or fourplexes. Dino, do you have a better idea? I know that's it something you and I discussed yesterday. Uh, it, it would not, Shelly. Okay. It would not, no. It would not, nor single family. Did you did you hear that? Yes, thank okay. you. So it basically it would be um, d dependent on the type of residential zoning to exclude duplexes and fourplexes and single family. Do we have any other questions? I don't see any more. And then uh, anyone feel free if you wanna ask one. Otherwise, as Shelly mentioned, the comment form is open. Thank you, Shauna, and thank you everyone for attending. And again, we would love to hear your comments uh, through the forum or through the chat. Thank you so much.